What it is, what it do, Starver World, it is your girl, the one and only Ash Said It, Ash Said It.com, Ash Said It.com. Welcome back to the Ash Said It Daily Podcast Show. I appreciate you guys so very much. Nearly half a million streams worldwide and growing daily. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So today is a pretty spectacular day. All right, I am joined with... Oh my gosh, I mean, this lady has so much on her resume. She's got so much stuff that she's been involved in, but a lot of you may recognize her and may know her as Mama, Eleven's mom on one of the biggest shows of all time, Stranger Things from Netflix, the beautiful Bethany (laughs) Dizel. Hey, Bethany. Hi. Hi. (laughs) How's it going today, Bethany? Doing great, thanks. Awesome, well. awesome. Well, first, I definitely want to say congratulations to you and your husband. You guys are expecting a little bundle this May, yeah? <laughs> yes, we are so excited. It's our first. We're having a little boy, Aww. so we're trying to get everything everything in order for that. Yes. I never realized how many options there are as far as baby gear and things like that go oh, um, yeah. so i'm having to do some research oh it's 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 a lot but i'm sure that you'll handle it you, you know you're pretty great you know well uh, as good as mom as you can be on screen as we've seen <laughs> <laughs> so doing a lot with that but bethany let our audience know where are you from i'm originally from montgomery alabama okay cool cool so, when you were a kid, what what was your dream career? What did you want to be? Oh, wow. Well, I started at a really young age um, singing and playing instruments. I think the first uh, musical instrument class I took was for the xylophone. <laughs> <laughs> and then from there, I kind of experimented. My parents were awesome in that way, allowing us to kind of experiment with different things. Mm-hmm. Um dance and just different arts. Um, I ended up uh, getting accepted to a magnet school program in Montgomery uh, called Baldwin and uh, for, for junior high school. And then for high school, same thing, I was accepted to another performing arts high school um, called Booker T. Washington Magnet. And uh, really there is kind of where I started honing my, uh, my love for acting and kind of, and music too. So I knew I wanted to do Something in the arts. <laughs> mm, something in the arts. What was the point that you realized that you wanted to seriously be an actress? Wow. It was probably... Hmm, that's a great question. <laughs> it was, it's always been kind of ingrained in me. Mm. Um, but when, when I really decided to pursue it, um, I had put in an application to get my MFA at Savannah College of Art and Design, mm-hmm. and um, that was kind of the first stepping stone for me was, okay, I'm really going to pursue this. I want to train, and I want to train really well. And so I decided to go to SCAD, and, and I was accepted kind of the rest is, is history. Wow. As you were entering the world of acting and Hollywood and auditions and all those great things that come with it, what was your biggest challenge? Oh, well, I think the biggest challenge is kind of, first of all, overcoming fear Mm. um, when you do auditions. Um, But secondly, uh, feeling, not not feeling like any decision that, uh, casting decisions are personal. Mm. That's a really hard one because... It feels very personal to an actor um, because you're putting yourself out there. It's a very vulnerable position to be in when you go in for these auditions and you create these characters. And, yeah. um, it is a very vulnerable thing. Um, but, you know, we do it so often and so much more than yes, we're told no. Mm. So it's really important to try and be able to find a balance there, a healthy perspective on um, uh, getting told no mm-hmm. <laughs> or rather than hearing it as not right now. Yeah, yeah. What did you do to handle the rejection? Because there's a lot, as I'd imagine, in the industry, you're constantly going on auditions and go sees. How were you able to handle the rejection, the no's? Yeah, uh, wow, that's a great question. It takes time. Mm. It really does take, the more that you do it and the more that you face that kind of obstacle, um, 
it gets a little bit easier with each time, and then you're able to just kind of let it go at the door. You know, you, you prepare so much, and then you get in the room, and you and it's, as long as you're proud um, of what you've created and what you present, um, it may not be right for what they're looking for. Um, they may give you adjustments. They may not. It just may not fit within a certain family that they're trying to cast, or age range, or height. Um, but as long as you're proud of what you do, um, I learned that I can just leave that casting office or that room and know that um, I did good work. And today is a new day, and moving on. It's a new day. Yes, it is. All right. You guys hang tight for us for one moment. We're going to be right back with Bethany Dizelle. And we're going to talk about this big epic role that she's been doing. She's been playing Mama, Elle's mom, Eleven's mom, Stranger Things. So you guys hang tight. We will be right back. Did you know that some foods can cause weight gain, body aches, and extreme fatigue? These are just some of the symptoms of food intolerance. Well, what is food intolerance? Food intolerance can occur when the body cannot properly digest certain foods. This can result in acid reflux, migraines, and so many other painful issues. How do you find out what foods are causing this irritation? It's easy. Pinner Test. With half a million satisfied clients worldwide, Pinner Test is the number one way of identifying foods that may be causing discomfort. This simple at-home kit is easy to use with results usually within two weeks via email it's that simple all right what are you waiting for go visit pinnertest.com and use my special promo code ash said it for your discount today welcome back to the show you guys we are chatting with bethany the zell yes she is mama 11's mom on strange things so bethany how did this how did you hear about the audition, I would say, for Stranger Things? Yeah, so uh, it's, I, I actually played mother. I didn't play Elle's mom mm. in the series, but the mother that finds the first mom to find Eleven after she leaves Hopper's cabin for the first time in season two. Mm. Um, but so there are kind of two mother figures, um, which I thought was really um, important right. for that season um but as far as the audition goes um all of my auditions come through my agent um and so it was just and like I said before it was just like another day it was another audition um I had seen the first season and was super into it you know it was one yeah. of those shows that you just binge watch mm-hmm. um so it's always exciting to get to read for a show that um you know, pe- you know, people are excited about, mm-hmm. um, but it also adds a lot of pressure. Um, there's a little bit more added pressure there rather than reading for a new a new series or a new character that we're not sure kind of um, what direction the show is going in. But for this particular show, um, my agent sent me the script and um, I auditioned and I booked the role. Um, a lot of times, especially with these kind of shows because the storyline and the plot and the different characters they introduce each season are so confidential. Mm. A lot of times um, when they do read for newer characters, you'll get um, a script or sides, um, which is a portion of a script that will be um, dummy sides. So they're Mm. just to see if you could potentially play this character, but there's nothing revealed to you about the character. So it can get a little bit tricky and complicated, especially in trying to create this person, um, this character (laughs) that uh, you don't have a lot of information about. Mm. What would you say has been the most important thing that you wanted to make sure that you portrayed with that character? Yeah, um, well, after watching the first season, um, and then I kind of went back, and I, I, I like, especially if there's a show, it's a show that already exists. Right. I knew that this show has a particular tone, mm. um, and so it was really important for me to stay true to that, to, to what the creators, um, the tone that the creators set in season one. Right. Um, 
uh, it's not a comedy. No. <laughs> so, uh, there are some comedic elements, I think, in some of the characters, but for this character in particular, there was not. Um, and so I really kind of started, um, I really kind of started from there, just doing a little bit of research going back into the, the, the first season and knowing that um, I just wanted to stay true to the tone of the show. Yes. Now, does Mama have a name? She does not. She does but not. But <laughs> I gave her one <laughs> as, part of, as part of my work and my backstory. Um, I, I don't want to say it because I okay. don't know if she'll get one. Gotcha. But um, I... I feel, I find it so very important to me when I am creating a character like that. I um, I have to give myself specifics. If I'm not given them, yeah. I like to ask a lot of questions about backstory and character. And if I don't have that in order to create um, the, the inner life of this character, it's very important for me to be as specific as possible. Where did she grow up? What... Um, right. What's her favorite song? Mm. A lot of times, um, I really, um, I really enjoy creating minimum five, um, but sometimes ten to twelve music tracks mm. for each character, just to kind of get myself in in the headspace and in, in the zone. <laughs> um, but yeah, she <laughs> she, I did give her a backstory and I did give her a lot of details for her life just to help me um kind of be able to to go there absolutely now will you be back the next season when we see mama back i I can't say um everything you know if you thought that season one was uh exciting (laughs) the anticipation for season two was insane i mean i you could feel the electricity on set it was palpable and so um with that being said you you know that the the up they're upping the ante mm. for the next um gotcha. season two we saw so much more special effects and awesome awesome um computer work from the special effects guys and girls and um i think they'll even they'll they'll up the ante even more the season three will not disappoint. I'm sure of that. Mm, okay. All right. I'm not type lift. I understand. <laughs> you got it. I, I understand. That is, that is okay. I, I thought I would ask just in case. But um, last but certainly not least, Bethany, what advice would you offer to any aspiring actors today? Oh, wow. There's, there's so much advice to give. Um, I think it's really important to not lose sight of, of what your goal is because like I said before you hear no and you get rejected a lot yeah. um, it's very important to stay grounded and to ultimately know that you were created for a purpose um, and a hundred no's oftentimes lead to that one yes uh, so just continue to push forward and, and get really good training um, it's important to train. You don't have to have an MFA. Um, and there are some actors, you know, who work in a different training programs in L.A., and New York, and Atlanta. Um, but I think it's really important to have a, a community and a network of mentors and teachers that um, can kind of hold you accountable and keep your standard, keep your standard high of, for performing. Um, so that you can always, 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 always get there. Um, when asked to do a one-liner as a waitress or when asked to do 16 pages uh, audition for The Walking Dead, um, you should still have the same level of commitment, preparation, um, and skill, um, no matter what type of type of audition it is. So keep training, keep pushing forward, and, and don't lose sight of what your goal is. Awesome, awesome. Bethany Dizelle, thank you so much for joining us today, Bethany. We appreciate uh, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. No, and I, I absolutely. you have an awesome weekend. Oh, you too. And before we leave, you have a new film that is in the works. I want to say it's in maybe post-production. Can you talk a little bit about yes. that new film? 
Yes, it's called The Best of Enemies, um, and it is a film starring Taraji P. Henson, who's incredible, <laughs> and Sam Rockwell, who is absolutely insanely talented. Yes. Um, he is kind of sweeping award season right now, um, yeah. which is current number three billboard. So this will definitely be a film to watch, especially with the two of them. Um, it kind of follows uh, 1971 uh, Durham, North Carolina, and Atwater. Uh, she's a civil rights activist for school, uh, for schools, school integration. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a, a story. It, it's a story about her. Um, and then that relationship that she develops with Sam Rockwell's character, which I, I can't reveal anything else, but um, I think it's definitely, <laughs> definitely going to be an exciting film um, when they release it, <laughs> when yes. the release date comes out. So. Looking forward to that and much more success to you, Bethany. And congratulations again for all your success and your little bundle that's on its way out. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> thank you so much. I really yeah. appreciate it. Not a problem. And thank you guys for supporting the movement, which is AshSaidIt.com. Keep in mind, anyone to tell you that you can't do what you want to do, you look them square in the face and tell them, don't believe me, just watch. Watch what I do. Watch me make it happen. Watch me make history. That's what we're doing this for. We're doing this for the history books. Social media is nice, but real life is so much better. Until next time, you guys.